Hi there, welcome to today's psalm. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Psalm 81 and this is part of a series as we go through 150 psalms in 150 days. So check out the other videos and, and keep tuned for uh, the, the psalms that are coming up. Before we get into reading this, um, the first thing I'd love you to do is grab your Bible, pause this, grab your Bible, find uh, Psalm 81 and have a read through it and just see what God might be saying to you first before we kind of pray through this together. Um, and the second thing is, I think as we read this, there is a prayer that's really important that we have ringing in our ears because it would have been ringing in the ears of the original audience of this psalm. And that is a prayer called the Shema. That word Shema means means listen or, or hear. And that word listen and hear is said uh, numerous times by God throughout this psalm as he calls his people to, to turn back to him, to listen and to love him. And the, the, the prayer goes like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I'm sure you've heard that psalm before, um, but Jews pray that every day, even, even some today. And so it's really important, I think, that we remember that. So the first section of the psalm is uh, a section of pr praise and thanksgiving. So let's read that together. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Begin the music, strike the timbrel, play the melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon and when the moon is full on the day of our festival. This is a decree for Israel, an ordinance for the God of Jacob. When God went out against Israel, he established it as a statute for Joseph. I heard an unknown voice say, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, I call, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. As you look back on your life, how has God been faithful to you? I'm sure there are a number of ways, and I promise you that he has been faithful and he's been with you even when it hasn't felt like it. So it's good to remember those times when you called to God and he answered you. Or maybe he provided for you like he provided for the Israelites at the waters of Meribah. That's where water came out of the rock in the desert. So let's just pray thanks to God. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us, that you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord, that you provide for us and that when we call to you, you hear us. Amen. Cool. So that last line, I tested you at the waters of Meribah, has a kind of double tinge to it, though, because it is where the water flowed from the rock. But actually, when Moses brought the water from the rock, it's also the time when he... Um, he failed to trust that God would do it in the way that he said he would. And he also um, acted as if it was him that was doing it to protect himself against the Israelites. Um, and so it kind of begins to ask that question of like, yes, God has provided for us, but how have we responded? And so let's go into that next section. I think it's calling us to, to confess. Hear me, my people, and I will warn you. If you would only listen to me, Israel, you shall have no foreign God among you. You shall not worship any God other than me. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it, but my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me, so I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. It's the timeless story of humanity, isn't it? It's the Garden of Eden when um, we are given the option um, and that the serpent comes along and, and, and whispers lies in our ear that we can do it alone, that we can decide what's good and bad alone. And we, then we take and we eat from the tree that looks so good to us, um, but God has asked us not to eat from. So maybe let's just spend a bit of a moment just saying sorry to God for the times that we have turned against him. God, we are sorry for the, the times when we have not listened to you and when we have not loved you with our whole heart. We're sorry for the times when we have be believed the lies of the evil one that you are not enough. And God, we are sorry for the times recently when we have rebelled against you. Amen. And so that last section, I think, is calling us into repentance, which means to turn back to God. Um, so let's do that now. If my people would only listen to me, if Israel would would only follow my ways, how quickly would I subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes? Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. 
the promises to a people that listen and love God with everything are beautiful, aren't they? And what's even more beautiful is that there is someone who did fulfill this, and that's Jesus. He is the one who, who perfectly listened to the voice of God, who obeyed, who loved him with everything that he had, with his heart and his soul and his strength. And so I'm just going to end this video, but if you could just wait maybe and, and just listen, maybe that's a good thing to do and, and repent and turn back to God and say, I want to love you again, God, with my whole heart, with my whole soul and with my strength, God. So let's do that now. Bless you guys.